Aloha e o katane. My name is Dr. Melissa Yi from Seeds of Truth. I'm here today to share with you some knowledge from some wonderful men that I've met along the way. Today we're going to be talking about the family of the canoe, a spiritual connect. Kimo Hugo and I have done a program together in the past, and Kimo came out with a wonderful book two years ago, and we'd like to share with you uh, some of his reflections from his original voyage on the Hokulea, and I'd also like to bring in my guest, Dixon Eno. So I'd like to introduce them now. I have with me today James Kimo Hugo. Hello. And Dixon Enos. Hello. And so today we're going to be talking about uh, not only the book, but the spiritual connect, the original intent of the Hokulea, which was really to bring the people back to their culture, to their origins, to their history. And the Hokulea had that pure intention. And um, there were many, many experiences along the way that showed the different people who were involved in it that indeed, with this project, they were able to go back to their origins and see how powerful it was and how it really was something missing in their lives and needed to be stimulated again and become a part of their daily life. So that's what we're going to talk about today, the family of the canoe, a spiritual connect. So let's start with Kimo Hugo, and you can introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your history, your work over mm -hmm. the years. Uh, Kimo Hugo, I graduated from Kamehameha and uh, heavily involved with the outrigger canoe, the Ba'akaokahi. And I um, was always, uh, even now, always in the kai, always in the ocean because I find it as a therapeutic source. Uh, likewise for all of our culture. I was introduced to the Hokulea project by a good friend of mine, Kawai Puna Prijin. Uh, who introduced me to Herb Connie. So we became close, and this was 1973, when Herb was designing Hokulea. So Koi Puna and I would, would be at uh, Herb's studio for several days just watching how he breathes and everything going into his creation. Uh, Herb would frequently say that um, his belief was that all cultures look to their objects for survival. And what we were witnessing was um, Herb creating that object that would be the focal point for his culture, our culture, to at least focus on and be, you know, um, rejuvenated, so to speak, because the Hawaiian culture at that time uh, was on a downward spiral. There was no recognition, no appreciation, and in many ways, uh, aloha was prostituted uh, for business and uh, public relations. So having to meet Herb Kani at that time and seeing the object that he was creating, Hokulea, uh, it just gave us incentive to be proud of our culture at that time. Mm -hmm. All right, Dixon, you're here today from the Big Island and it's so wonderful to have you here. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your background, the work that you've done over the years? You've been a beach boy and now you're living on the, the big island, the island of Hawaii, full time? Yeah, I, I work on the beach. I was a lifeguard on the beach, uh, Waikiki Beach, and I, uh, I also was a beach boy too, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, um, well anyway, my thing got started when I was, when I went to, uh, I went over to the big island to live. Uh, I got married and I went over to the big island and uh, I helped, uh, start a, a, a Native Hawaiian culture school with uh, Joe Tasso, Booth Matthews, and uh, Lloyd Nicoba, Lincoln Alo, and, uh, and uh, Kaipu de Gia, and many other, uh, other people that, uh, that uh, again, almost in my memory kind of mm -hmm. going a little bit out there, but uh, uh, when, we, when we started the school, uh, after uh, a year or so, uh, we heard that uh, through the grapevine that one canoe was coming by. And so we were kind of like excited to, uh, to see this canoe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember as I was down, I, was, uh, I, was, I think I was down by the city, I was in the city of refuge and I was just came back from 
giving offering to our gods, Tutani, Tanalo, and Luno. Uh, I'm a, I was raised in a Catholic religion, but I also found out that uh, it was important to give my offerings and my love to my ancestors because they were the ones that you know came and gave us all this this aloha and these islands and you know and among us brothers and sisters. But anyway, getting back to the canoe, when the canoe started coming, I was down, I was but uh, just coming out from uh, Haleo Calvary, and I saw this canoe coming in. Uh, the feeling inside of me felt that, you know, like it was like a, up, a real uplifting within my, my soul and my heart that I felt, uh, uh, I felt a, a different feeling like, wow, the culture seems to be, you know, picking up at this stage. But as the canoe came in, and uh, we had to bring the canoe in, and we were thinking, wow, we're going to bring the canoe into the channel, because this is the first time we brought a Hawaiian canoe. Mm. And we were like, you know, like, kind of blown away, because mm. we, we don't want anything to happen to this canoe. Mm -hmm. So Kaipo said, Hey, you know what? Uh, you know we're going to. Uh, no worry about it. You know I'll jump in the water and then I'll try to see if we can help guide the canoe inside and we can anchor the canoe over there. And you know and then we get to meet, I'll meet everybody and this and that. So, so anyway, the excitement, excitement was really unreal that this 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 voyage canoe was coming in and, and you know bringing in our culture and I, I felt that wow, this is you know because we never ha had the feeling or the touch of really knowing about our culture. And I just, uh, that's, that's really a horrible feeling not to have that kind of identity. Mm -hmm. But when the canoe came in, see, there was a special spirit in that canoe. And that canoe brought Hawaiians in there, Hawaiian brothers and sisters. Whew. Excuse me, but uh, there was a, you know, that was a real uh, learning experience to see just regular brothers and sisters, brothers especially, you know, being able to uh, to take on this uh, adventure. Mm -hmm. So uh, we gave them the assistance of trying to uh, take care of the canoe and make sure that uh, we gave all our feelings to go on this journey with them. And. So, through this experience, I learned, I me as a, you know, I, I learned a lot because just uh, the feeling of, of being with the crew of the whole Kulea, I learned uh, we didn't have any big conversation. The best thing, we didn't have a, we didn't sit down and discuss about all the things that we had to do, all the things we didn't have to do, <laughs> and all this with this and that and this and that. It was more like of a spiritual feeling that we knew already what we had to do. Yeah. And that's what really got me, yeah. you know. And uh, the thing that I really observed was Kimu Hugo, because that was a true blessing for us, because uh, I knew that, that this man was really uh, worried about the safety of, the, of us natives, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, excuse me. And uh, uh, I learned from him that uh, you know you don't uh, you don't have to ask all these questions. All you gotta do is see what's going on in the canoe. Mm -hmm. You know, observe what's going on, and then from there you can learn real quick what's going on, mm -hmm. because all that. Sometimes all the scolding and all the talking and all of that just it, it creates a lot of confusion. Yeah. But see, the thing is, when you're carrying that spirit and the spirit of love, see, a lot of people don't understand. Us Hawaiians, when we say aloha, we mean aloha. And like the uh, modern day, how uh, like colonize us, colonize us, is that they change our our feelings and our thoughts of really meaning that aloha. And uh, someone's got to really understand that and really look at that. And you look at the canoe and look at that because 
The canoe is a light. It's bringing this light across. It brought all people across. It brought the gods across with them. And it allowed for them guys to search through all of this. They had to depend on the gods. And they also had to depend on each other. And they had to depend mostly on the love of each other. Because in all of what I felt working with Kimu in there was that if you didn't have that kind of love, you didn't, there's no sense of getting on a canoe. Mm. See, because we all have our own mana. My mana can be a fisherman. My mana can be, the other guy's mana can be maybe a growing taro. And, mm. and, and, and so, 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 so. But in Kimu's situation, uh, he was more in tune uh, to nourishing not just the canoe, but the spirit of the canoe. Mm. And that's why I really respected the whole thing. And not only respecting that, but he always was always worried about the safety of every crew member on top of the canoe. So within that kind of teaching and within, within that kind of learning, I found out that there was an inner peace among all of us where we didn't have to go. They saw it. Um, uh, Namu Namu, eh? you know, like uh, talking about this and talking about that and this mm -hmm. and that. We all seem to be so happy. Mm -hmm. You know, throughout the whole day, I mean, I mean, the, every day I got up was an excitement. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was so in tune with this canoe and these guys that I supposed to be down. I mean, I was the principal of this school, you know, and I said to myself, well, you know what? If my kids cannot run my school and take care of the school, then I haven't accomplished anything. Mm. Mm. So I said, I'm going to jump on this canoe and just take off with these guys and see where this thing going to take me. So I did. I got onto the canoe with them guys. And then I remember Billy Richards. He was, uh, I think he was on a surfboard or he was on another canoe and he was just starting to head out. And then he looked at me and he said, wow, bro, you think I can come on this canoe? And I looked at him like, you got to be kidding me. Mm. Not with this crew. You know what I mean? Mm. You just come on. If you think mm. you can do the job, you just come on. Mm -hmm. So Richard jumped, grabbed him, jumped, jumped on the canoe, and then and we took off. And uh, we sailed out to, uh, uh, we sailed out to Kauai High. Yeah, we went out to Kauai. Uh, we, we began training outside of uh, Napopo. Yeah, Napopo for a while. Yeah, first, before, there, yeah. there was late winds, but uh, we stayed there for almost a month, and then uh, which time uh, we let everybody sail up to Corner Village, and then on oh, to yeah, Kauai yeah, High. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right. Mm. We had all that training experience mm. before we left. And the thing about it was that we had uh, our one of my uh, spiritual uh, teachers. I had two of them. One was Sam Lono, and the other one was to, to Clara Manesse, mm. living in uh, Honanao. Mm. And uh, this lady was probably around, I think she was about 80-something, you know, around that, or even a little older than that. Mm. But she was very uh, uh, in tune to the canoe, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, mm. In fact, she got onto the canoe and sailed to Molokai eh, with us. To well, yeah, uh, she sailed around. She's 83 years old, and we have a slide. Uh, it's entitled uh, Tutu Clara, if you know, they can show it. I think we have about three of them. Uh, she was a matriarch of uh, Ho Nao Nao and sort of the head of security for Hoku Lea. Um, in this slide, actually, we're seeing um, Iolani Luahini. Um, Tutu Clara sailed with us uh, to Kwai Hai, then uh, from Maui we sailed to Molokai, and from Molokai to Oahu. Um, Tutu Clara told us that she had a close friend who is our Amakua, uh, Maano, and that wherever Hokulea would go, her friend Maano would follow us. So here's Tutu Clara on the um, back end of Hokulea. Uh, as we were moored in front of Haleoke Ave. We were there about a month. But uh, I'll let Dixon continue and explain more about her and the other kupuna that we listened to in this effort. Yeah, there was another person too that was uh, very uh, instrumental about what the canoe was, uh, Abraham Moses. Uh, he was another one, and uh, Boot Matthews too came down, and we all participated in helping uh, to uh, 
to feel the canoe and get to know the canoe and to see all these different things that uh, that went on in the canoe. And uh, it was a great experience uh, just to feel that this part of the culture was really coming to open the way up. It wasn't just a school. It was now it was a school and the canoe. Mm. And, I, and I was like really touched by it because I just came out of the temple for giving offerings and, you know, having this spiritual feeling of, uh, of uh, feeling that, you know, the school was here and now there was a, this canoe that was coming in. So it was like a, a hands-on experience. You know, up until that time, you had been teaching the kids theory, although there was right. some practical experience too. But when the hokulea in its beauty came to your island, you saw all the efforts that people had put together, and now it was there before you, and you wanted to be a part of it because it was living. Right, right. And and the point was, uh, we, like Kimo said, we did this little short journeys out to uh, to the different parts of of the main islands, going out to Waimea, and we just we like went to uh, went out to. Uh, uh, what's that bay where they got those fancy? I mean, now the Hawaiian. Oh, Naiho Malu. Na Naiho Malu. Yeah, mm. we went into there and we, we we learned these things. But the thing about it was like, you know, like I've been up to the Big Island, but coming around within mm. the canoe, mm. Mm. yeah, and coming around to experience the different areas, the different mana. You see, like when you're coming in by car, <laughs> and you're coming into the bay. You're coming in by car. Mm. But when you're coming in with the spirit of the canoe mm. and also the love from your brothers and your brothers and sisters that are on the canoe, see that brings a, a, a spiritual feeling. And not only a spiritual feeling, but a feeling of of like you never felt before. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and there was so much love there because all the way we were going up we were singing. You know, we were, uh, you, you remember mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. we, we, we were singing and we were learning at the same time. And mm -hmm. I remember that sucking, you know that paddle that wanted to guide the canoe? You oh, know, the sweep, the street sweep. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember a couple times that thing would just, like, he could flat you right on the deck. In It'd a overpower you if you're not wide awake. You don't wide awake. Right. But at the same time, you had to be in tune to it. You never just grab the, right. the paddle and think you was the Tarzan or the you, thing. You would have to anticipate. Oh, you got to anticipate. Oh, she's riding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You got you to gotta go with the ocean and, 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 and I know that with the, with the paddle. But I observed Kimo all the time because Kimo was the one that really knew how to, you know, um, use the paddle and uh, you guide the, the canoe with the paddle. But as we were going up, the coastline. You remember the f the food that was brought up on the canoe, mm -hmm. like banana mm -hmm. and then uh, ulu mm -hmm. and all that stuff that we would take, mm -hmm. that we started uh, experimenting with. Right. right. And I remember one time they had the they had the uh, uh, opelo. Oh. They had dry the opelo. Giant. Okay. So mm -hmm. so they were drying the opelo for us guys for cow cow later on on the canoe. Mm -hmm. So one brother, I don't know, I don't know, if it was Liko or somebody went to Liko Martin and he said, "Hey, bro, wanna throw the the the, the banana on top of the, the opelo? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "Wow, this brother trying to tell us to throw the opelo." But I found out when he went throw the, the banana on top of the opelo for dry, after after amount of time, uh, maybe maybe at the end of the day or something, I was eating more of the the banana than the, the opelo, because the opelo, I mean, the banana tastes like the opelo. Mm -hmm. You know oh. what I mean? So, like, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, it was making more food. More, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> more food. But through those experience on the canoe. Yeah. So, and then uh, we had this guy, I think so was from the, uh, uh, this guy was, uh, he was reporting for some kind of uh, ABC News, I don't know. National Geographic. Uh, National Geographic. Right, he had the yeah, mullet on. Yeah, he had the, yeah, yeah, right, the right. He was with us guys. And he was just picking up on the action. Yeah, you know I mean? right. I, I saw him just, you know, like, uh, first I seen him come in board like, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, pretty straight and this and that. But then he started getting into the, the law with the brothers yeah. and everybody. Right. So he was just fitting in. Mm. But uh, the reason I explained in this part is that, you know, there's a certain feeling on the canoe that if you don't realize and you come on the canoe 
and you really don't have the right feeling of what is presented before you, it's really hard to relate. It's just like just getting on, a nega on any sailing boat mm -hmm. or any mm -hmm. uh, yacht mm -hmm. <laughs> or any whatever, and no you're just going to take a trip. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, This is a whole different aloha. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's because I mean, we're always looking after each other, bro. Mm -hmm. huh? always, always, always watching always. for each other. You know, just, just, just showing that real love in between of that. Mm -hmm. And you always felt safe because you always felt like you were, you know, you were really uh, us, uh, into each other. And then after we got into Waimea, uh, there was one afternoon, I think, and then and Kimo, uh, we were talking, and then somebody said, hey, we should go up to the Heiau and hmm. we'll give our aloha. Poor koha. Yeah, poor koha. You know, Malo, thank you for what, you know, this journey is all about. So on our way up, we came across this wind, this makani. And the Makani circled around us guys. And I remember brothers talking Hawaiian that never talk mm. Hawaiian. Mm. Mm -hmm. They were speaking Hawaiian and they, they don't speak Hawaiian. They never talk Hawaiian. They were talking in Hawaiian. Yeah. And it was just really trippy. I mean, the wind was just taking us. Mm -hmm. Kimo, you felt that. Oh know. yeah, I mean, it was just something unusual, but for real, you know, that Kupuna ancestors were with us, and then they were very much uh, being a part of the family of the canoe. Mm. Mm. So they came into you and oh, spoke they came into you us. Oh, you came yeah. into us real big because mm. after that we, we were looking at each other like, wow, <laughs> you know, who like, are you? <laughs> oh, you know, like, this yeah. is the real stuff. Now we're mm. not playing anymore. Yeah. Mm. You know, we gotta do this thing right. Yeah, that's, a, know, that's a message. We just gotta do this thing right. Yeah. We cannot let any other entity no. come inside here Corporation. And, start, and start directing us guys how to do this or bringing in other people mm. that uh, has nothing to do with working the canoe, sailing the canoe, making the canoe. You know, these mm. are, you know, we felt this. As, as, and the reason why we felt this was because, like, we never really talked about it. Then I remember one time we were sitting down in Kauai Hara, we was getting ready to go up to Apollo Point and then uh, we was going to shoot over to Maui, right? Uh, oh, yeah. So when we, was, we, we were all sitting down and we were waiting for, uh, I don't know, we were waiting for instructions by, uh, by some person to come by and to instruct us to how we do But us, the only instructions we know is Brother Kim, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> we're looking towards that. So then we saw Dr. Emery come down to the pier and he's wearing this, you know, this, this nice white cap around him, and he had his clipboard, and he came down to try and explain these things to us about the canoe. And we said, uh oh, this is not gonna go for us. We're sorry, brother, we love what you're trying to do. You're coming down, you're giving your manau, but for us Hawaiians, you gotta put another Hawaiian over there who mm -hmm. sailed with us, who love us, who understand us, before we can make any decisions. You, you understand what I'm saying? So we got very upset mm -hmm. with the whole situation. In fact, we're getting all upset about it that, you know, we don't know if we wanted to sail, go sail again or whatever, because we saw like there was some kind of intervention that was coming into the canoe. Because you know, mm -hmm. we're looking at now, my belief is I'm looking towards a guy that's right here or the guy is right next to me. Mm -hmm. I sail with them, I'm learning from them. They're gonna tell me now what to do next. Yeah. It's not somebody going to pop by with a hat and a clipboard is going to tell us guys, okay, mm -hmm. this is this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to cut it with me. Mm -hmm. For me, it ain't going to cut yeah. it with me. I don't know what the rest of the crew, but it, but, and I sat down and I talked to the brothers. I said, hey, you know what? I don't feel right, man. You know, because I feel that any accomplishment that is, that has been done here is for one, first of all, is for the love of what we, what we want them to do. Second of all, we love the canoe, and we love the, the brothers and sisters who, who give in their lives to sail on this canoe and to bring this canoe so that we can all learn from this canoe. Mm -hmm. The bottom thing about all of this was the learning process of this thing. This is why the canoe came inside, to, to enrich us with our culture, enrich us to the kua, and to understand that our ancestors believe in these gods to bring us all these things. And now, it's like 
this some entity is trying to change all of this. Mm -hmm. He's trying to make it into a scientific this mm -hmm. and that. You know, for me, I kind of connect that because I'm very simple. You know, I had a hard time going to school. Well, I never learned anything in school. I learned a lot from the beach. Mm. I learned a lot from associating with all these different people because I learned when you give a law, you get a law, mm. you know? And that's what our people really are gonna understand today. Because once we lose that aloha, we lost everything, mm. you know? Uh. So, getting back to the canoe, after that, you know, after a white man, so anyway, we got together and then we said, oh, come on, we gotta get this thing together, regardless of that guy. You know, <laughs> forget about him, we don't see him, <laughs> we just go and go on. Mm. But inside, you know, we were thinking, oh man, what, you know, what? I said, okay, so we're gonna sell this canoe. We get the brothers here, we're going to do them. So we went up to a polo point, brother. Right. And then the Makani came. Uh, oh, he won't pick oh, us up. What oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So the Makani took us across, right? He was coming across. As soon as we got into the Alanui Channel, I never believed. The canoe went to the left. The canoe went to the right. We had waves going to the right, going to the left, going this way, and going that way. So good thing we had Kimu on board. He saved. He figured out how we should take care of the canoe and get the canoe to go across. Mm -hmm. At one time, it was with Buff, Buff was on the canoe with all of us. So we, uh, we, we finally got across the channel, and then we, we, went into, we finally got into Maui. And then we was thinking, hey, so me and Brother Kaipo were sitting down, we were thinking, hey, you know what? His canoe, get, he loved us, but he get a little ha haka car. I think that haka car came back from Waimea. You know, something about Waimea that we were confused about. Mm. You know, like you said, that you know, the corporation comes in before you know it. Mm. Uh, uh, two Tani Tanaloa is out the door. Mm. The next thing is, uh, what happened to the Aloha? Uh, we'll do this and we'll do that. Mm. And uh, <laughs> hey, hey, bro, Business. you know, uh, this uh, is Aloha now. You know what I mean? So, so anyway, we were talking about that, me and Kaipo was, was up in Maui. So we said, hey, bro, what better we go? We go down to, uh, uh, we go get out in the country. We get away from the hoko there for a little while and go in the country and go, mm. go, go holo holo and go do this. But I remember when we, you know, after that when we came, I came back and we were talking and stuff like that. But I remember the part where Walter Reedy came to the pier and then he greeted Tutu Clara. You remember that? Oh, yeah. You, you yeah, remember yeah. that when he was coming into the pier? Right. Molokai. Uh, yeah, Molokai, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was that Molokai, yeah, when oh, he came yeah. in, yeah, from. Oh, yeah. We, oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. It was in Molokai, that's right. And uh, it just felt, it just felt that all the things that we were doing was right. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, because we, 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 we kept ourselves connected to the, first of all, we kept ourselves for the love of each other, brother, on top of the canoe. Right. Until this day, too. I know, like, I was totally confused. Because at one point of all of this, uh, you know, when we, we went in Kauai, we, we, Tutu Clara was with us in, on, on, on Molokai, I'm sorry, on Molokai. And then uh, uh, I was kind of confused because uh, uh, when we were in Molokai, uh, after Molokai, we went to went to Honolulu, yeah? Mm -hmm. New York. <laughs> <laughs> See, Molokai, we went to Molokai. We went to Maui or went to Molokai? No, we, we came down from Kauai High. We to stopped in Maui. Maui, then we Molokai. Yeah, we, we did a little sale, a couple of sales with the Maui crew that we trained on our way up to the Big Island. And then we took a run down to um, Kaunakakai. It was very fast oh, yeah, because of the yeah. winds outside of Lahaina. It was very fast. Then we had to make a really critical right turn uh -huh. into the harbor and she was going so fast that even with our sails uh, down and slacked, um, we ended up on Canoe Beach. I mean, lucky there was no coral heads. I mean, this is uh, how we were welcomed by Molokai. I mean, Molokai to, to us took us back into the time of old Hawaii. And it was something that you never see on Oahu, mm -hmm. which would be our next stop. Um, all of this uh, aloha, true aloha and love, 
um, through Dixon and Boots and Matthews and the Big Island people, Kaipo and what have you, Ilani Luahini especially. Oh, yeah. You know, I would say that we came together, everybody was in a spirit of nice. And, and you know, that's how it starts off to get to this unique recipe where you get all of these ingredients. And the fact was that we came in in a spirit of nice. Everything was mali, it was nice and you know, harmonious. And no time was there any presence of corporate posturing. Uh, the type of posturing that you see in big business, um, the city, the state, and especially what's going on in a White House now, mm. that, that type of intimidation. So with these ingredients of nice, through Dixon's help and everybody else, um, coming to Molokai sort of, you know, put the frosting on the cake, if you will, is because we met real people also mm -hmm. who were concerned about who owns Hokulea? Who's going to be on the canoe to Hokulea? Will Hawaiians, if they're going to be on Hokulea, how would they be cared for? So Dixon experienced this in Molokai, and then we continued on to Oahu. Wow, yeah. New York. New York. New York. <laughs> New York. <laughs> New York. Uh, and then I remember only, uh, I remember, I remember these things. And, 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 and see, the thing about, about the canoe and, and our culture and everything is that we have temples all over the islands. Our ancestors built these temples, and it took a lot. A lot of work because I I'm I'm I stay down in Apuhonua, and uh, the temples down there are very special to me. And uh, the feeling that I have is that we need our brothers and sisters to go to these temples because you know they're afraid because mm. they're you know they 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 believe in God and they believe in all these mm. diff different religions. And I'm not telling them that this is the right thing to do. All I'm saying is that if you're going to uh, go back into your culture, you have to learn from these experiences. And I learned these experiences through Sam Lono. He was the one that induced me to these heyals and stuff. So the thing about this is that if you do not go there and touch it or feel it, the spirit and the, the energy in the area, uh, it's hard for you to understand what mm. I'm talking about. You know, you need to go and give your offerings or just go there and touch the thing or we'll go and feel the, the, the mana into the, the rocks that are there. And then you're going to know that there also is another reason why our ancestors really believed in all this mana mm. that, 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 that's in this, this area there. And, you know, when I have a problem, I go straight to the heiau. That's what I do. I go straight to the heiau, give my offerings. And I say, and I get these voices coming back. Either it's coming from God or it's coming from, I can feel them. It's, you know, you can just, you, 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 like I said, sometimes I get up and, wow, you know, the money is in you. And it's, sometimes it's hard to control, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. you got it all and you want to go around telling everybody how great and beautiful this thing is. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you're scared because you're going to say, hey, you know, this brother, look at it, he's kind of off, man. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you're not all there, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you're, you're getting out of hand over yeah. here now. <laughs> So, you know, you just take all of this in. But I want the people to go into these areas and feel these areas and feel the money of the areas because all these areas are all over the islands. And they're in the most beautiful places where you can go and, uh, and give offerings. But a lot of times it's on beautiful properties and beautiful hotel lands and all these other different lands. But the thing is, we have the right to go to our churches. Mm -hmm. You know, they cannot stop us from going mm -hmm. to the churches, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So on these on the on these canoe on the canoe, Hokulea, that's coming true. That's the same thing when when we got onto this canoe and we came around the bend and we came into uh into Waimea and we, we hooked up and everything. It brought us right up to the Heiau. Huh? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. went up to the Heiau and we mm -hmm. felt that experience. And I came down for an experience. We looked at each other. I remember that experience when we looked at each mm -hmm. other like, wow. Precious. Yeah? Precious. Unbelievable feeling. Mm -hmm. So I would like 
my brothers and sisters who sail now around the world to really think about. I know they must have felt the energy wherever they went, not what energy they felt, but you know what? It's all back here. Yeah. Um, it's all mm. over here. Hold on there. And guess what? If you take the children of Hawaii and you take them on that canoe and you experience the same journey that we had, it'd be more meaningful to our, ends, our children and our culture to rise up to the point where they can really understand what their people have done mm -hmm. and the feeling of their, their mana. If not, we're going to go through history like the tree without any leaves. Because mm. we cannot touch the sun. We cannot feel the energy of nature. We cannot feel God. Hey, if you take all the leaves off the tree, you, ain't got, you only got the stump of the tree. After all, the tree is going to die because the tree cannot feel all of this. Mm. We as Hawaiians, we got to be able to feel this. And we got to be able to sprout these leaves on our hand, touch our gods, respect our ancestors, what they respect. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. because that's what's keeping us. That's what's keeping us from really being, getting into our culture because people are saying, hey, you know this, hey, no, 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 no. You just go over there, you find out for yourself, then you make the decision. Mm. That's good. But never put that down yeah, because very it's, it's very powerful. And that can rise our people up. Mm. You know? yeah. mm -hmm. And through, that, through this canoe, I believe that you can do a lot, a lot, lot more. If you take these canoes and you double them up, and what you do with this canoe is you take these children, these kids from the school, the ones who, who went, went through the education, educated already, graduated, throw them on the canoe. And the ones that are, have graduated from colleges and everything, bring them onto the canoe at this stage. Because I'll tell you why a lot of times at this stage. When I jumped on the canoe, we were 30 something years old. Hey, nice. Oh, that thing just lifted me. Bro, I could <laughs> never, ever forget this experience. Yeah. I don't care what experience I, mm. I've gone through. I have never experienced this kind of mana, this yeah. kind of love, this kind of energy. So, what I'm saying right now is hey, camp school, we built a core, we built a, a fiberglass canoe. It's about time. It's almost 40 years from what we did. How come we don't have a core canoe right now? Mm. Three times the size of Hokulea. Mm. Four times the size of Hokulea. Can do. And let us put all our children on top of that canoe. Visit every beach. Yep. Visit every heiau. Uh -oh. Village. Every, every, every settlement that the Hawaiians lived in. I don't care whether it's private land or whatever land. And we got to mm. get up to the beaches mm. of these places and feel this energy. Even Waikiki Beach. And even Waikiki <laughs> Beach. <laughs> right. of the shirt. The shirt. Right. Yeah. I mean, we got to feel all of this. Uh, you know I mean? Oh, yeah. You know, and, you know, I just made it, uh, uh, interject in this. And you're talking about Bishop Estate. Yeah? Right. Great Bishop Estate. Right. Yeah. Core forest and all. Plenty land. Plenty land. They even own land around by the White House. Wow, <laughs> you're kidding me. Oh, no. Wow, be one canoe right over there. Well, that, <laughs> the thing I'm getting at, okay. Uh -huh. Yes, the Bishop Estate should cocoa and give all families canoe. And this can only be done now by getting only trustees who have the blood. You know, right now they got three guys they're looking at, two of them business clowns, I guess. Uh -huh. One of them is Hawaiian blood, but there's so many people out there. You know, I look at uh, Dr. Emmett Aluli. Uh -huh. He would be good. Miley Meyer. There's so many within, you know, our community right. that would be better trustees. Right. And hopefully they get in. We can have our own canoe. Right on. <laughs> well, you know so what? I, I just like to bring it well, back. Well, I want to just yeah. get, get keep on top there because yes. I work with the trustees. Right. Like, and, the, and the guy who really started at our school was Matsi Takabuki. He was the one that really interjected uh, in helping us to get this school started. And a lot of times, common man got pissed off with me because I wouldn't go to the guys on the bottom. I go straight to the top, bro. Hey. I, that's the only way you can get something See the done. captain. You know, see the captain. <laughs> right. Okay, but what I'm saying about this is that I'm, I just want to tell all the brothers who, who in Bishop Estate, work for Bishop Estate, mm. who are the trustees, whoever. You know, look, bros, we got the forest up there. We got the land. We can haul the canoe right down from the mountain, all the way down. If we have to haul them down without mm -hmm. even a truck, mm -hmm. haul them take the canoe and haul them all the way down and oh. practice exactly what our ancestors did. Well, you know, the mana 
of the area and of the canoe, of the core forest, the canoe will walk on its own. Right on. You know right what I mean? On. Right on. Right. And, the, and the thing about that, bro, just think how much, how much learning experiences, just, just to go and harvest the canoe, harvest right. the log. Right. Just, just mm -hmm. that part and just watching the birds, you know, mm -hmm. whether they're going to eat all of them. There are certain birds that they used to watch, you know, if, uh, they, they, uh, they can tell whether the wood, the wood is rotten or whatever, you know, not mm -hmm. to cut the trees down. But in order to learn all these different experiences, it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy to learn that. But we have the time and we have the, the resources because we have Sister Bernisa. Hey, Auntie. Auntie, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. No, 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 no. Oh, these guys are not. Uh, no, Auntie, yeah. Auntie, right. Auntie Bernice. Right. Please, uh, please, to, um, please, yeah. Auntie, uh, give uh, us something. Cocoa. Cocoa. Because yeah. yeah. once we can, you know, I don't think anything would match the beauty of this core canoe that we built. I mean, it's going to be a really a special thing if we can get it built. Mm -hmm. And I just like to tell the trustees, hey, you know what? Just cocoa, brother. Just, just really try and help these, these uh, uh, our children of Hawaii. And especially, bro, you know, don't forget the ones that are, you know, that cannot make it in school and, and you know, they, they're having a hard time and the brothers in prison when they come out. And, you know, if you gave them some kind of direction into something of their culture, I'm sure mm. we wouldn't have all our brothers in mm. jail <laughs> having a hard time, you know what I mean? Come uh, on. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, sure happen. we can yeah, help yeah, them. Yeah. You know, I mean, mm. uh, we, 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 you know, I think, we, we can be better if we look after the ones who cannot really make it. Mm -hmm. You know, give uh, them that opportunity. Uh, uh. If you can solve that, you can solve the world's problems. I'll tell you, because that's what's happening in the world. We just push aside all these people who cannot make it, you know, instead of really helping them. Well, I'd, I'd just like to uh, talk about Mao, because mm. really he was the greatest teacher. He mm. was the navigator. Maybe mm. you could give a few um, stories about Mm. what you learned from him because he stayed with you with your family yes. and you had face-to-face -face conversations with him right. and he shared so much of his mm -hmm. wisdom mm -hmm. can you give a few examples yeah we launched on march 8 1975 from kulo and that was a day mao pi lug mao pious pi lug arrived from micronesia in the island of sarawal we had been looking at different uh, navigators throughout the pacific and uh, I think one they were looking for, uh, I don't know if it was from Santa Cruz, um, there comes a time in their life when they feel that they're gonna expire, that they get on that canoe and they sail away and you know, that's the end. So uh, being on a board of directors at that time and uh, invited by Herb Connie, um, we uh, realized that in, um, in the Western Oceans in Sarawal, there's this young, navigator that had been navigating the uh, ancient way. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, using all of the elements in nature, and he had a collaboration, all of the people in, in, in that area, like how our ancestors were, had this partnership and collaboration with everything in nature. And the, what I'm saying is that all uh, components of Mao's canoe came from his rainforest. Mm -hmm. And likewise, 800 years ago, our ancestors who were successful in finding these islands, all of the components for their va'akalua, their voyaging canoe, came from the rainforest. Yeah. So that, that's the reason why we today and our ancestors of past have always included everything in the rainforest. I mean, you look at hula, you know, everything about hula is spiritual, but the foundation goes back to Tupele, you know, Ilani Luahini. But getting back to Mao, when he arrived on that day in Kula, he and I had a fellowship at the East-West Center, and he was going to live at this, I guess you can call it clinical, sterile dormitory. Mm. You know, not like what he's used to. Yeah. So we brought him home to live with my parents, and, and everything was compatible, the foods. We had uh, all of the plants that he was familiar with and all of that. And Kauai Puna Prichin, um, you know, who I had been close with and also with Dixon, um, I gave him a call and I says, Kauai Puna, you got to come up to Papa's house. And Kauai Puna said, what's happening? He was a jovial guy, really, mm -hmm. with it, right? What a guy, man. Yeah. So I says, Kauai Puna, come up. God is here. Can I say one thing? Yeah. 
Kawhi Puna started a lot of things. Oh, yeah. And I've never yeah. heard his name presented, you know, in yeah. a lot of things. And he I'm was not, always left out. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable mm -hmm. brother that was, man. So I called Kawhi Puna up and I says, come up to Papa's. God is here. And he laughed. And he says, no, he's here right now. Come. So Kawhi Puna came up, brought his guitar, I met Papa Mao. I didn't at any time be ni Eli, nosy, and say, hey, Tell me the stars you're going to find for Tahiti. You know, then I can know her. No, I didn't be in the alley. You know, that's wrong already. Koi Poon and I sat there and stared at Mao, even while he's eating, mm -hmm. because he exuded a magic. I mean, he's pure. He's not spoiled like us. Right? So I asked him, I says, um, you're the champion. What makes you the champion? He says, well, before the Hawaiian Navigator was the champion. He says, now I am. I says, okay, what makes it that you are? And I also asked him, I says, well, you know, what's the problems we're going to find to go to Tahiti? I says, I'm hearing all kind of boogerman stories, you know. And he says, it's no problem, but we have to pay, play this game. I says, what game? He says, we have to see, meaning us, we have to see and believe in his friends who helped him find this island. So I says, Papa, who's your friends? He says, what about the stars? And I went, oh, Papa, there's about three billion zillion stars up there. You're not going to look for every star. He says, no, I look about maybe 30 of them. Mm -hmm. So what about the rest of the trillion? He says, that's my friends. So he went on to describe his friends who helped him find this island, different birds that fly out from the island so far and come back different fish, coloration of the sunrise, coloration of the sunset, the movement of clouds, the coloration, um, birds, like I mentioned. All of these elements of nature, his friends, is what he relies on. And that's what he shared with us, that we, spoiled here in Hawaii, until we realize and appreciate his friends, we ain't going to get there. Yeah. You know? So it's that simple. Well, um, before you continue, I'd just like to um, bring in a wonderful clip from a movie that mm. I saw several years ago. It actually won uh, Movie of the Year. It was called Life of Pi. And uh, we'd just like to show a little excerpt from the point where I thought was really the, the, the most revealing part of the movie. And it's all special effects. But it's, uh, it's, a it's a movie that was about a young boy who mm -hmm. uh, gets shipwrecked. Mm -hmm. And um, he's on this raft because on the boat itself is a, a tiger. Mm -hmm. And so he's sharing the space with this tiger and uh, he doesn't dare go back onto the boat because uh, he knows the tiger will take his life and he's already lost his parents. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's all alone adrift in this big ocean. So maybe we can show it now. But anyway, the exciting thing about this movie is that for those who have never experienced the sea, this embodies, I believe, that spirituality that you will experience when you are alone with the elements mm -hmm. and you have nothing to hang on to. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this young man had that powerful experience of connecting not only with the stars, but the fish in the ocean and this wonderful whale that appeared. But that's what, that's what happens. Your senses and your feelings and, and within yourself, because you, you, you're in this position, you have to reach out for, to where the God or all this energy around you, because if you don't, you're not going to last very long. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and what we're seeing in this uh, unique um, part of this life of life is very much what the navigator experiences on a daily basis. Now, our viewing audience, they're looking at this, and the first thing that I believe is coming to their mind is magical, mystical, spiritual moments. And certainly, they are yearning for this experiences but at the same time there's people who have experienced that mm -hmm. and like I said that the navigator Mao um, his friends are everything in the ocean yes he mentioned that at one time he relied on the whales and we have a podcast uh, 
with him explaining how the whales would come and lift up his boat. They're his friends. So in this life of Pi, it just shows one segment of the whole picture of this collaboration with everything in nature of which um, that was the only classroom that Mao had. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing what um, Pai was going through, all alone outside in the ocean. You had the phosphorescence coming up from the light from the sea. You had the, you had the whale. The whales don't sleep. You know, one portion of their brain is sleeping, the other one is, is awake. So the whale sees his light through the phosphorescence, comes up, jumps out of the water and plays. This is typical that goes on when everyone, all of us who go to sea, or even on land, are in a spirit of nice. There's no corporate posturing. When everything is nice, hmm, that recipe of nice mm -hmm. comes to fruition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we call them Aumakua. Mm -hmm. But what else did Mao share about his friends, the different animals? Well, you know, every day, he'd come up with something. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a one-shot deal where he'd explain it within two hours. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd mention, uh, case in point, um, he would go out at night to the northern part of our property, and he'd stay out there. I know he went to relieve himself, mm -hmm. okay? And he'd stay out there a long time. And when he'd come back in, I said, Papa, you okay? Because you take too long. He says, yeah, but I go out there look for storm stars. I said, we're talking about storm stars. He says, yes, I go look for Hokupa, which is the North Star. And there's these different stars, my friends, that are going to come up and it's going to tell him what the weather's going to be like. You know, so we had that happen. We're sailing in Kulor. Papa Mao, Herb Connie, and myself, and there's no wind. And other crew members. And so when you're not moving on Hokulea, there's this feeling of lethargic. You know, I'm taking over you. You're getting spoiled and lazy. So this was happening at Kualoa. Hokulea wasn't moving, and people were impatient. So Papa Mao says, well, we wait 15 minutes, then we're going to have light wind. Mm -hmm. Exactly 15 mm -hmm. minutes. You wet your face, the puff of wind started coming from the north. Mm -hmm. Hokulea leaned over and went. We, we go up in a forest, and we look for how because he used how for the curved booms. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody's silent. And we don't go like a football team and run helter-skelter into the rainforest, even though there's these plants that are not indigenous, yeah, all of these uh, hitchhikers. Yeah? We gingerly stepped around each plant not to disturb. Mm. You know, this is the beginning for us to learn about caring for our rainforest. Nobody talk. And he just sit, and he's looking. And he says, the best how I'm going to pick for the booms for Hukulea is going to be the how that is over the stream. He says, back here, maybe 30 feet back, I don't want that how. I want that one. Why? Because my friend, that water that's coming from heaven, and this nice how, they're good friends. So, you know, people can be shocked they hear this. Even when I tell people that, they're, yeah, right. So this was Mao, he was relying on everything in nature. Mm -hmm. you know, he'd sing. We'd have a star dance in which he makes a big circle on a parking lot right next to Hokulea while we were working on her. And he has somebody represent due north, south, east, and west. And in between, you have a breakdown of the other points in the compass. And he says, OK, you stand here. And you're going to represent the star that I'm going to use as it comes in, comes up from the east, and it's go overhead, gonna go overhead, and it's gonna go to sleep in the west. So as we do this star dance, and we, we actually play the uh, role of the star, and we go you know, to the western point, he's doing this incantation, this chant-like, very mystical-like. You know, so he just filled all of our time with these moments of truth and life, unbelievable. I can see that it was an unforgettable experience for you. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. so much time has passed. It's about 41 years since the exactly. birth of the Hokulea in the mm -hmm. form of a, of a dream, an idea, mm -hmm. designed on a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, what will you take with you when you pass from this life in your memory of 
your experience with the Hokaloya? Well, you know, you ask me what I'm going to be doing, what's go what am I going to take with me for for one thing. I, I just hope I'm on a voyage in canoe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because that's I all I know. I and that we have people there of one mind, always in the spirit of nice. And the mindset has to be that of uh, concern for life safety. Mm -hmm. uh, on my days off from Hokulea, I was with a first responder unit, a very specialized unit. It was the rescue squad of the all the fire department. And we had to attend to a lot of uh, accidents, but at the same time, a lot of fatalities. Accidents and fatalities, I felt, in observing and dealing with, with these incidents could have been prevented. And so we were guided by special initiatives that we have to be concerned with the preservation of life and property. And if at any time we see any situation which shows indications of hazards that we are required to prevent that. And in cases of accident or fatality, we'd have to thoroughly investigate that. And we did that through uh, forensic photography. I brought that to Hokulea. So on this long voyage that you're talking about that I may someday have, you know, hopefully that's a while off, yeah? that there will be peace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a tough one, yeah? <laughs> that there will be peace. But I think what I want most is more recognition of the Hawaiian culture and all the Pacific cultures. You know, like I said, aloha and everything about our culture has been prostituted, you know, by city, state, federal government, big business. I mean, how many companies have used the word aloha in the right names? On, bro. Right how on. many high-rise buildings come up and they give them on Hawaiian name? Right. And I hope that's my voyage. Right. Mm. Excuse me, Kimo, but you know, that word aloha. Mm. When they use that word aloha, they got to give out a whole lot more. A whole lot more. Right? <laughs> Even if it is blood. Right? That's why they're scared. That's why they're scared that yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Especially in giving, eh, bro? Mm. Yeah, selective giving. Yeah. Yeah. I thank the two of you so much for being here today. Uh, I was not fortunate to be a part of the Hokulea, but I can see how from that experience 40 years ago, um, that dream has come to a reality today. And I know we have a long way to go, but uh, it's given something for the Hawaiian people to be proud of and everybody in Hawaii. I see it unfolding now. And so we can look forward to a future, maybe mm -hmm. not in our lifetime, mm -hmm. but a future where all the good things will manifest. We need a core canoe. <laughs> Bishop of State, Bernice, Auntie, Auntie, we need a core canoe. Yeah. <laughs> you need one. Four times the size of Hokulea. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys have to bring it to a reality. So it, it can in the time we happen. have left, yeah. let's work it on it. It can happen. Right. So aloha to everybody, and thank you so much for listening today. Aloha. Aloha, aloha. aloha. sisters, brothers. Mm -hmm. Aloha. <laughs>